you're good to go. And also, too, if you're investing, you should be investing. But if you're at the point where you're living paycheck to paycheck and you're investing, you really have to sit down and see if it makes sense to continue to invest while you have that, while you're living paycheck to paycheck. Because in short, if you never actually give yourself that breathing room, that margin in your budget on a month to month, yearly basis as far as living paycheck to paycheck and getting out of that, a lot of people end up doing what? They end up pulling out of their investing. Because most people are investing into their 401k or their retirement plan at work. Let's just call it. It's not like people have retirement, um, excuse me, taxable brokerage accounts out here. Most people are putting money into their 401k, 403b, whatever it is, taking their match, et cetera, et cetera, yada, yada. But if people continue with paycheck to paycheck or they're not able to save enough money for house down payment, all these different type of things, they end up pulling out of their retirement and then you put yourself in a tax situation, possibly. And you don't want to do that. All right. Um, keep an eye out. Yeah, unreasonable discretionary purchases that leave you overextended. Obviously, don't spend more money than you make, even though most people are saying they, they their income isn't more than their expenses. Set goals, right? Yearly goals, one year plan, five year, three year, whatever you want to do. Meet with a financial professional. Shout out to Sideline School Corey. I'm not a financial professional, but you can reach out to me. Information is in the description. Okay. Yeah, spending at sensible levels. Not even spending at sensible levels. Just don't spend more than you make. Okay, the final trick to getting away from living paycheck to paycheck. Is to continue with the discipline budget even after you paid. Yes, you all you have to do a budget every month. My wife and I just did the budget yesterday. You have to do the budget every month. Once that is paid off, direct the money you want to use toward monthly payments to your savings account. Boom. Okay, yeah. Okay, credit cards for bad credit. Don't. This is gonna be an ad. Don't do that. <laughs> don't. If you, have, we're gonna skip over that. Bottom line: the cost of living and a disconnect between income and expenses are causing many Americans to live paycheck to paycheck without money left over to cover unexpected costs or be set aside for saving. There are a number of ways to slowly improve your situation and work towards financial stability. Here we go. Methodology. I told you, look, they only surveyed 3,000 people. The online survey of the general population Americans was committed, commissioned, excuse me, by Forbes advisor, conducted by market research company, one poll in accordance with the market research society's code of conduct. Data was collected from October 2020, October 24 to October 26, 2023. The margin of error, okay, 1.8, 95% confidence. Survey was overseen, okay, by one poll team. Got it, got it. All right, cool. Got it. All right, y'all, that's it, y'all. Locked and loaded, end of the episode. Again, survey, how many Americans are living paycheck to paycheck by Becky Pokora. And this is edited by Gerard Morales. My bad, Gerard, for not including in the beginning. Look, most people are struggling financially. That is the biggest issue. Then on top, I told y'all that was going to be the biggest issue, but I did not think that we were going to see in that survey that barely 5% of people were saying that debt is their actual issue. And then on top of that, they're using buying, they don't believe that their lifestyle is causing an issue, but yet they're using their credit cards and their buy now pay later to fund their lifestyle. There's a lot of disconnect on how to just, let's just talk about stability from a financial standpoint, but just, just getting to a point where you're not living paycheck to paycheck. Let's call it that because not living paycheck to paycheck is very easy to see. My recommendation is usually, I mean, the higher the number, the better. But once you're at 20 percent, OK, cool. We're not living paycheck to paycheck. If after you pay for your necessity, your debt payments and you're investing, and you got 20 percent left over. Then you're in a good position. A lot of people are in a situation where they hit that mark, but then they with their lifestyle, they're spending more money than they make, as we saw in this survey. Thus, they're in the red or living paycheck to paycheck or feeling like they don't have any margin. But it's like you're spending so much money on your lifestyle. Then when we talk about what you're spending your excess money on, your discretionary money on, it's on things that you don't actually, you know, remember, right? You're just out here spending money. So my wife, like, look, why are we just spending money instead of just cooking? Because I already spent money for the groceries. Or we already spent money for the groceries and we just go out to Chick-fil-A. It's like, but when we do that, that doesn't really do anything for us. Like we didn't feel like, okay, we're tired, whatever it is. Now we spent that money on Chick-fil-A, but instead let's stop doing that and spend that money more on things that we we'll remember as far as our discretionary spending. And that's the other step that people need to get to. When you spend your money from a lifestyle, on lifestyle standpoint, make sure it's on things that you want. A lot of you going out to eat, going to the bar, the club, whatever it is, with people you don't like. Shout out to the women out there because you know how women be with their friends. But it's like you don't even enjoy what you're doing, yet you're spending money on it. It's different if it's a need. Your needs are what they are. Your debts, if you got debts, your debt is what it is. When it comes to your lifestyle, your discretionary spending or your wants, and you do not have to spend that money Stop spending your money on things that you don't want to do. If you don't like your friend's kids or you don't like your friend and you don't like your friend's kids, don't be giving them no money for the kid's birthday. It's okay if you don't like them. Tell them you don't like them so you can move on with your life. 
and spend that money either on things that you enjoy or spend that money on yourself as far as investing in yourself so you can go and make more money. So you can spend and have more money on the things and for the things that you want to do. That That's the part where, you know, people people just lose me on. And shout out to the fact that people don't under, understand how debt is screwing them financially. People don't understand how debt is screwing them and they're not on a on a budget. And nobody has any money saved. They said $2,000 for the emergency savings. And that's, I mean, it was for a monthly basis. But that that is just crazy. 5.8% believe that debt is the reason they're living paycheck to paycheck. It's like, what? Yes, and cool. You know, high monthly bills and inflation, that is what it is. But if you don't think that debt is your main reason that you're struggling financially, then why did y'all bitch and complain so much about these damn student loans? <laughs> this, this is why, where I'd be lost. And obviously, the survey was just about living paycheck to paycheck. But I would love to see different data points. Well, how many people of these people that were surveyed, how much student loan debt do you have, right? How long have you been making payments on it, right? Is it forbearance? All these different type of things so we can link these data points better. And that's why I'm going to do the different other surveys about living paycheck to paycheck against high earners and things like that. So we can see, we saw the high earners. So for those of you trying to make more money, which is one of the things you need to do if you're living paycheck to paycheck, be careful because that lifestyle creep, that lifestyle inflation is going to come and bite you right in the butt. Because if you have no budgeting, right? So people have high monthly bills, right? And lack of budgeting are the top two things. Low income is third, but high monthly bills and lack of budgeting and financial planning were the top two things, 49% and 46% respectively. If you are not on a budget and you don't know how to make sure you don't have lifestyle creep, lifestyle inflation impact you, when you increase your income, it will rear its ugly head, right? And then so 31% said increase in the cost of living. But sometimes it's not just an increase of the cost of living as far as inflation that we quote unquote can't control. You increase your cost of living. That That's the part that people won't talk about. All right. That's it, y'all. Locked and loaded. End of the episode. Make sure y'all comment, like, share, subscribe. Let me know what you thought about the video. Shout out to the trolls who's watching this. If you made it this way, leave your comments. I'm going to respond to you. I know. I think I'm going to start putting like, you know, dash Corey. So I know that I'm the one responding to you. So Jordan don't get no flack. But go ahead, trolls. Leave your comments. People who actually, you know, not saying you have positive comments, but you're not trolls. You actually have constructive feedback. Go ahead and leave it as well. Again, share. So you can help somebody out here who's living paycheck to paycheck and they actually figure out how to make some progress with their life. All right. Again, my information as well as my co-host information, Jordan, will be found in the description and one day will be a pinned comment. All right. Again, like I said, the next couple episodes, well, probably just the next episode, I'm going to get through some more articles. Those articles are shorter about, let me see, because I got them up, high earners. Yeah, we got, yeah, we got two more articles on high earners on that. Then we're going to talk about, well, I, I tease it, but. The bank of mom and dad. I know we talked about parents using their children like as their retirement plan, but now we're gonna get about getting to how children are using their parents because they're struggling financially. But that's gonna be probably I don't know if it's on that would be that probably be only at least in two episodes. But that's it, y'all. Locked and loaded. Remember to save more and say less. Keep making better your best, and I'll catch y'all in the next one.